like they were struggling to find that moment. We'll see whether they can actually find something something this time around. We'll see whether RNG find the Vladimir ban button this time around as well. <laughs> it's just uh, RNG already have the star power, and they've shown that they can win, not just relying on their star power, that they can just outmaneuver teams. So yep. I would like to see them go back to that identity, because I feel like it's missing a bit in this series. GT are going to be the ones that ban away the Trundle this time around. So Savoki is going to be on a different support this time. Vladimir is going to be banned. He's going to leave the Rek'Sai open for the first time this series. That's very curious that they decided to ban Trundle from blue side. Uh, yeah. Savoki has gotten it both times this series, and it effectively could have been a, a very feasible ban from red side. Very true. Well... Obviously, just didn't want to ban anything else. Wanted to give themselves an opportunity to potentially get the Vladimir, as RNG were sticking to their guns about banning Rek'Sai most of the time. RNG now thinking about whether to go back to this Hecarim or not. That's the Brawn once again for Mata. They did win the last game. And so, two pieces of that puzzle now already locked away. And where uh, RNG did do a good job is kind of understanding where their win conditions were around Hecarim in the early game. Yep. Again, constantly using that ultimate bottom, um, trying to sync it with the teleport timers. Just game talents had really good responses to minimize the execution there from RNG. So I uh, do give them props from that. They definitely had the right idea, just were un unable to make it click. And now game talents with some opportunities for themselves here. Ezreal being looked at. Of course, Karma now an option as Savoki doesn't have his uh, Trundle available anymore. And Ezreal being looked at as a pick away from Uzi. As well as into Tentacue's playstyle. Speaking of denial picks. Wow. Well, that's going to be locked in. So it's going to be Azir and Ezreal here for game talents. Xiaohu going to have to mix it up. Literally taking uh, RNG's composition out from underneath them. They yeah. so far have a very long arm comp uh, in that you've got the poke from Ezreal and the distance from Mazir. Xiao actually thinking about heading over to Talia here as well. We've seen a lot of players now in the LPL following Rookie's lead. We'll see whether he does decide to lock it away. Victor would make some sense there as well. A lot of people think that Talia lacks damage for some reason. Um, Spawn is very hard on this and that Talia does not lack damage. She actually does a ridiculous amount of damage if you can hit all of her uh, shards bolts, from yeah. her Q. Obviously late game she will fall off because she only has or she doesn't have an ultimate that does damage as well but for that early to mid game Talia is actually very strong in her damage output, her utility and her reach around the map. Well, she's not going to be locked in just yet but of course that swing can go towards the top side of the map. MLXG of course sticking to the Ghost and Smite. Very flexible comp at the moment here for RNG. They can switch everything around. Much See stronger they... draft this time around from yeah. RNG. Already out of the gate. Like you said, they have a lot of flex picks. Um, you're not quite sure where everything's going they to go. They a jungle, mid, or top laner as their final pick. I was expecting Tom Kench if Trundle was banned. <laughs> He's letting me down with this Morgana hover. Savoki. I was really hoping for it, because they've already got the extra global presence of the Rek'Sai as well. Imagine it. Be very cool. But, Q thinking about grabbing the Trundle here for Gimgoon. Oh, sorry, the Rumble. Not a Trundle. Trundle's been. Will be a so lot of damage, but no. It's going to be the Maokai. Gimgoon back onto a big tank. I actually really liked the Rumble pickup, especially if that Swain goes into the top lane, but I think that um, Maokai is certainly a safer pick, again, if you're denying a lot of AoE magic damage, Yeah. which the Swain will output. Again, this is 6.13, so Swain's ultimate has been nerfed from 10 seconds to 20. Yeah, once you toggle that one off, of course. Master now thinking about which player's champion he wants to actually lock in, where all of these champs are going. I have a feeling that the Swain could be towards the top side of the map. We will see. Will be a lot of magic damage if this Victor's locked in, however. I want Xiaohu to go to the Zed, something like that. I mean, they have the magic damage insurance of the Swain. Pick an assassin, go to town on Republic. 
I'm really surprised that we actually haven't seen a lot of Shen, especially uh, with all the double teleport running around. This would be interesting. Oh, uh, it is going to be the Talia. So Xiaohu heads over towards it and we'll see whether he's going to have more success on this champion than Otto did in our first series. Blooper is going to be taking that Swain towards the top. So it's cool that with uh, RNG's final pick that they're able to kind of reveal where all of their lanes are. Yeah. Um, especially because they force game talent's hand into taking the Maokai as opposed to the Rumble. I actually really like Rumble into Swain just because Rumble's one of the few champions that will have uh, even wave pushing, if not more wave pushing ability than Swain. And so he won't be bullied underneath the tower where Swain is really dominant just because he'll be able to keep that creep wave either even or shoving Swain in. There's also the fact that Swain's, I guess, health regen helps him out after champions have sort of tried to get burst onto him and then he just turns into a bird and trades back really nicely. However, Gimgrin on the Rumble, he's not worrying about mana. He's not worrying about things like that and has a lot of consistent damage, especially if you can get those silenced auto attack smacks into the back of the head. Exactly, but because RNG were so much smarter in the draft, probably the smartest that they've been all series, they're yeah. able to get the Swain into the Maokai matchup and we'll see if Looper can exploit this. Yeah, we'll see if it pays off as the coaches shake hands. Let's get into game number three of GT RNG. Thank you very much, Pentaq, and here we are for game number three between RNG and GT. GT once again on our blue side of the map, and you can see Republic right there has picked away the golden chicken from Xiaohu, and Xiaohu actually going to mix things up and grab the Talia. He has played a lot of different champions so far in the LPL. However, this is the first time he's really deviated away from it, especially in this series. It's definitely a champion that will fit in Xiaohu's wheelhouse, however. And oh, something yeah. that I want to touch on for RNG's composition is every single one of their laners pushes. And this is just something that you'll see time and time again out of RNG as Republic's actually possibly caught up. Whoa, yeah, they're not going to push too far forward. Republic is going to be able to head back to base before these minions crash. But if that's a sign of things to come, it is dangerous. Yeah, but again, um, Swain excels when he's pushing someone underneath tower, although as I say this, is actually initiating a lane swap. So, RNG, I don't know anymore. Yeah. It's an answering lane swap, though, as you can see. It's just going to be a little bit upside down. Swain is really reliant on the lanes underneath him being pushing far forward because he exposes himself uh, to ganks when he's at his most effective, which is pushing someone underneath the tower, laying down Beatrice, and then hitting them with the Torment. Yep. Because uh, he's is one of the few champions that has two damage over time abilities to punish someone while they're CSing under tower. So it's super important that he has someone like a Sivir or someone like a Talia. And then RNG, this is not good. Yeah, Tormented Soil was taken what? though. So Savoki just going to be able to get a little bit of money as Pentacute grabs himself a little Sentinel. Trade one. This is why you don't scale an ability until yeah. you're in the lane. If that was a Dark Binding, obviously you're trading much more damage in that scenario. Still a risky 1v1 against the likes of Braum. Do you see Savoki just catch them with his Tormented Soil, though? That was incredible. That was a little bit silly, uh, silly, but like you said, we will have the Australian lanes. And otherwise, a standard game so far with the top on the bottom. Yeah, just a little bit upside down. Everything A-OK. -okay. And we'll see how Gimgoon goes as this tree. Look at this. Against the Birdman. Look at how strong Talia is. She just shoved in Azir. Yeah. How does it feel, Azir? How does it feel to be on the bottom now? <laughs> <laughs> of course, Azir will hyperscale into the late game where Talia will fall off due to her ultimate not doing any damage. Yeah. That said, they also bring both ridiculous amounts of uh, utility, although Azir does have a much stronger siege potential. And a much smaller wall. So it's okay. People who are like, Talia's not better than Azir. But Azir just met his match, level two, <laughs> getting shoved in. Yeah, well, I feel like Talia is almost unmatched as far as level two shove is concerned. 
That Q is ridiculous when the ground aim worked. However, you can see Republic is farming out just fine, despite the fact that he took some harass. Just ate through a potion. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. And Pentaq and Savoki, they are getting shoved in, as you are want to do when you're against a Sivir. It's just generally how it works, but still farming up quite fine. Everything's going to be OK. I mean, Savoki and Pentaq, if they're used to anything, it's just surviving. You know, just getting through it. That's why they have the tormented soil. That's why they play Trundle all the time. Get control of that creep wave. Oh, yeah. Uh, what this does open up Uzi and Mata to, however, is they do have to be aware of the Rek'Sai gank path, especially over that wall, so... Whoa, Seismic Shove lands nicely under Republic, but answering damage is there. Shahu takes a fair bit. But this creep wave's gonna hurt him. He's doing a really good job managing his worked ground as well to continue to maximize damage output. Yeah. When Shahu gets a champion, he looks good. And we talked about this, how Talia would probably fit very well into his wheelhouse just because, uh, you know, kind of fitting that control mage identity, which Xiaohu is so well known for as an Azir main. As well as uh, being very mechanically reliant there as well. As uh, Talia does take a fair bit of that, and Xiaohu is a fantastic mechanical player. Smarto is going to get on top of Savoki. Black Shield goes down, meaning they'll turn their attention to Pentacue. Uh, you can see Lupa. Didn't use his flash. A little bit of a gank attempt there by Wuxiang, but nothing found. And this is the only lane that's actually not pushing, so Looper not making the most out of his damage over time abilities, um, but actually just getting pushed in by Maokai and farming this one up safely. Republic's playing this really interestingly. It looks like whenever the seismic shove comes out from Xiaohu, he just tanks it and just tries to get damage back and win the trade. And it does half work most of the time. It's interesting. Talia, fairly uh, low mobility if she's not utilizing her passive, so doesn't have a lot of options to get out of the Sand Soldiers when they get on top of her. Yeah. I think mean, it's cute. It's the first time I've seen that sort of reaction. Also one of the first times that I've seen this particular matchup. So. I mean, you pretty much have two options when you face Azir. You either outrange him in the case of Lulu and Varus, or you outmaneuver him in the case of the LeBlanc and the Zed matchup. Um, same thing with Victor. You're outranging him with your laser reach. Yeah. Talia doesn't really have that range option as there we go there's oh, the tormented soil that's why you take it that was satisfying that was to stop the level one backs back now mm -hmm. well you can see it has actually stopped it and it is going to mean that rng stick around for a little while or at least mata does mata does this all the time where he's just a random support just sitting in a lane just getting solo exp <laughs> And he just is, he's like bluffing them. He's like, is Uzi here? Is my jungler here? You don't know, do you? He wants to empower his roam with some extra experience. It reminds me of old what school. Is going he's on? actually trying to 2v1 uh, them. The Ignite's down. <laughs> Pentaku flashed forward. He's not going to die. Success from Mata. Gets himself the exhaust. He's about to get dove. Flash is, yeah, there's the first blood. Goes down with a Prey Seeker from Wuxiang as Uzi's trying to get the work done here, but Lupa teleports and finds nothing. Oh my... Okay, that is so Mata. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ma it reminds me of old school Moscow 5 when, yeah. like, Diamond uh, Prox used to gank um, Darius and Alex Lane all the time, and so they would play super aggressive, and you just had to respect it because you're like, I'm sure I thought Diamond... I you were going to say it just seems like... Edward or Gosu Pepper at the time. Well, because just that's how he played as well. <laughs> it's just this idea that they're so scared that the jungler's there. Like, if Mott is there by himself, I'm like, the jungler's coming. I'm about to get ganked. This <laughs> is a 2v2. Not that this guy's actually just, you know, messing with me. Trying to 2v1 me. Getting a, a, a flash out. Of course, it is traded for the teleport. So, uh, bad news for RNG fans. That was not a good play. Looked yes. good initially. Backfired horribly. The bluff horribly. was called. And it wasn't a flash. I mean, that was an arcane shift out of Pentacue, so he still had his flash. Had to use his heal in the end to Here's save his jungler. But the ignite was down. So he trades his life for an ignite, and we'll see whether it is going to pay off as Xiaohu works some ground and gets himself a blue buff. But this has just been a, a little bit of a silly series in terms of it individual decision-making across the board for RNG. However... Has been almost a career-making one for GT. Who, despite all odds, have been finding themselves leads in these games. Uh-oh. 
There's the teleport. Here's the dive potentially coming in as Xiaohu's going to teleport on top. Never move comes down as Gimgoon's trying to move out of the way. Seismic Shove was close, but no cigar. And GT to at least free up the mid lane. Now Wishong's going to make his way in as well, but RNG, free time here on the bottom side of the map. It pretty much is trading waves after all is said and done, so a uh, wave advantage for GT in the mid lane because they're going to shove that one in and deny Xiaohu as Wushong actually being caught. Yeah, gets the knock up eventually, and Republic finds his way all the way over the top. Once the Emperor's divide, but Wushong not going to be out of tunnel his way far enough. Tower falls down, Swain picks up a kill here, as you can see. The Weaver's Wall used to dodge out of the way of the Azir, who still has the ultimate? That was amazing. Really nicely played by RNG. Uh, what they are good at is being able to collapse, especially in their own jungle. It's pretty much the line in the sand that you do not cross against this team, and they finally show up back to expectations. Well, you can see Republic tanks actually that full Q combo as the Seismic Shove gets him back in, and Xiaohu answers, has to slide his way back underneath his turret. Xiaohu's actually at risk of dying here as Looper's just going to bird his way over the top. That's terrifying. Empress Divide will get him to relative safety, but the Torment's doing work. Mata wanted to try and find the dive as well. MLXG's here, but Wushong, enough to get them out of here. However, when you're talking about minion waves, things are looking good for RNG, although the gold is entirely even. Yeah, after all is said and done, game talents do manage to trade the pressure point on the mid lane. Uh, no one died, so good Emperor's Divide out of Republic to save his life right there by getting that outer top tower. That said, I did not hit the inner tower, mm -hmm. although Uzi is pushing that one back. Yeah, and Uzi's actually been the, benefit, the benefactor of all of this as well. 93 CS to 71 because he's just been able to pick up all of this sideway farm. And now Gimgun and Pentacue actually sharing here on the bottom side as they want to be able to shove through and grab this turret if they can. Savoki already playing, I guess, uh, I, I don't know, provisionary. And what's important is that uh, Republic would actually be in a very similar scenario that Uzi is in terms of a CS lead. But because RNG uh, threw so many members at him and diving that tower, they actually evened up the difference between the mid laners. Yeah. So... Uh, all in all, RNG do come out on top, and we're now going to try and trade a bottom tower, and Uzi is actually migrated towards the mid lane. Well, there's a twisted advance as Looper's being possibly caught out. Wushong's making his way in as Pentagoo gets the arcane shift across. Ventral Maelstrom does pop, and Gimkun doesn't have a lot of mana left over. And in goes MLX. She's got the ultimate if needed, as now they're underneath RNG's turret. Looper will fall down, but is anyone going to die to this turret? Not just yet! As GT are trying to escape, MLXG over the top, Savoki is going to be the casualty here. As there's the Weaver's Wall one more time, and Xiaohu going one versus three. Oh, Gimgoon's boy. backing. Oh my god, he survived. The nerves of steel right there. Oh my goodness. Ah, so game talents, they minimize their loss right there. Great collapse again from RNG. But again, this is a decision where instead of choosing to trade one for one on the towers, because Uzi was initially pushing the top lane, they choose to walk from the top tower, collapse all the way to the bottom, and tr try to take the fight. And that's pretty much the perfect example of RNG's mentality this entire series. Yeah. Just fight. Just all the fight. Time. Kill him all the time. Mm hmm. There's a cannon creep. Don't let him get it. We gotta fight. It's Pentacute. Arcane shift in to clear up this farm. He's going to do so quite nicely. Uzi continues to stay in the lead, but full vision available here of the Siva. Doesn't quite have Essence Reaver completed just yet. And if we're talking about power levels, Pentacube, regardless, will still hit his first. I don't know. Uh, because he's going for Muramana, as opposed to looking for his Sheen, uh, Uzi is definitely much stronger right now. Oh, right now, yes. But I'm thinking like two item power spike versus three. Uh, yeah. But I think Uzi's going to hit his power point before. Just because of uh, how Penta Q is itemized and likewise the CS discrepancy. But yes, normally, mm. in the race to three items versus two, <laughs> Ezreal does <laughs> typically win that. Well, I have a feeling Uzi will beat him to two. Just because this guy is very far ahead in the farm. But CS in the lead. Again, is the difference between Uzi's Ezreal and Penta Q's Ezreal. Penta Q picked up the pickaxe, Uzi gets the sheen. He wants the immediate power right then, there. Wants a punch in the face. Mm -hmm. Penta Q's like, oh god, please let me farm. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Wishong is it down here towards the bottom side of the map. RNG once again invading through. 
Savoki throws out a binding but doesn't find anyone. This red buff going to be well and truly contested. Wish on we'll see. Is going to be able to lock that one down for himself. Tags Emily Shi here as well as the Black Cleaver comes in. Republic now going to be collapsed on as there's the Emperor's Divide. Gets knocked up. Seismic Shove's going to get him back in, but a really nice. Maneuver with the E to get himself out of there. Another Dark Binding going to go wide as the teleport's coming in from Looper. Cancels it, as he wants to stay towards the top side. He was cancelled by Gim Goon, actually, but who oh, may wow. have overextended and traded his life for this. Nope. Gets not, out. Not quite enough mana as MLXG dodges out of the way of another, another Binding. Just takes away the jungle camp. Now Republic's still very low under this turret. But RNG are so keen to fight because Uzi is that much stronger than Ezreal right now, which is why they're consistently playing around that lower quadrant of the map, not only for the red buff timer, but the fact that my server is stronger than your Ezreal right now. If this comes to a 4v4 or a 4v4 or a 5v5, we can beat you. Yeah, damn right. Uzi now Essence Reaver in hand. Building towards those Berserker's Graves. We'll see what he decides to go to as far as the attack speed item of choice is often the one thing that does change up as far as the Siva build is concerned, whether you go for the Phantom Dance or the Static Shiv, something like that. And whether he goes first towards Infinity Edge, whether he's feeling confident, whether it's going to be something like a Last Whisper item, or even a Hex Drinker in Uzi's case, who does really like that item. He likes to have that defense, especially when he flashes forward, mm -hmm. plays on the front line, maximizing damage output. Damn right, Pentacute almost dying to the Krugs, but we'll be able to go back now, see whether he has that Man Immune completed, whether he is going to complete that Sheen at the same time or something like that, whether he has quite that money in the back pocket. He's been denied a lot of farm. This CS discrepancy between Uzi and Pentacute just opening up bigger and bigger. Yeah, 45 CS. And 46. again, in Wait terms up. of kills, that's about three to four. And terms of your goal value. Just ridiculous. You can see Republic continuing to try and hold on here as Xiaohu moves out of the way of the soldiers. Just continues to clear out creep wave after creep wave. And RNG grab dragon number one here. It is almost down to half health. We'll see where the GT can move over. This is Doesn't a look like it. much cleaner game from RNG. Um, they've done much better in preparing their vision, acting around the vision oh, wow. that they've invested their gold into. Although, as I say, this looper getting caught out, but he's swaying. There's the trade. Never move. He's going to land on both of them here as he's just so durable. We'll see whether he can actually make it to this tunnel as Weaver's wall has actually been thrown out. Jahu is going to make his way up here. Nice twisted advance comes out from Gimgoon, but he's going to leave Wuxiang to fend for himself. Tunnels into the base. Oh, he's going to get oh out. Oh, my God. What a beast. What that a legend. Well played. And look at this. Just takes the dolphin tunnels out. Very cute uh, outplay from Wuxiang right there. And they both survive. Uh, teleport bottom, though. Xiaohu just looking to pick up some free farm as his bot lane moves into the mid lane. So not allocating and splitting uh, creep resources or lane resources. And also, I think he's hunting Pentacue. Yeah, also denying Pentacue taking down that turret as well, which they would have really liked getting some extra global gold as Republic does have his Nash's Tooth now. Has claimed himself the CS lead now that Xiaohu's just launching himself around the rift. Savoki hasn't got too much done here on this Morgana so far. Needs to start hitting some of these bindings. But of course, that Black Shield will be very important. At the moment, though, one turret apiece. I mean, Dragon going in favor of RNG. However, otherwise, it's very even. As MLXG. Yeah. See, that interaction is not fun. <laughs> um, but RNG have done a great job in just kind of controlling their waves. And like you said, bullying GT off of them to find themselves natural CS advantages. They're still down in gold, but it's a very tight game. MLXG wants to build towards his Trinity Force. Does have his Cinder Hulk though, which is why not a lot of damage is falling on top of him at the moment. Very, very tanky with his current build path. He's gonna stay at about that though for the next little while. Now Wuxiang is here, ready to start some potential engagement, but the blue buff easily stolen here as Yahoo Takes a few rounds of spells, but Republic running low on mana and no blue. And every single time, RNG are contesting each and every buff. Just yeah. bleeding game talents out through their jungle. And this will now give them the gold lead as they take down this tower. Well, tower's actually traded. So, game talents ahead for the next couple of seconds. 
Blue buff is going to be traded over. So even as far as that trade is concerned, I guess in the end, as but it you, all works out. You push through. Ah, uh -huh. And this is where things change. Gimgoon is ready. We'll be able to hold on to this wave for himself if he likes. It's 18 minutes into the game. Rift Herald's still there. They can take that if they want. And Republic, oh no. It's like a battery hen waiting in the mid lane. It's not going to happen. Uh, missed opportunity for RNG. See if they capitalize on it. No, they run bottom to fight. This is so bizarre. Yeah, well, there's the weave as well. Once again, the flash comes out of Savoki as Wushang's looking for the tunnel opportunity. Actually wants Xiaohu here as he's also just trying to make sure that no one can get anything done. Savoki's going to fall. And Wushang has bought a fair bit of time, but I'm not entirely sure what for at this stage as Looper locks him down. Okay, so it works out for RNG because they pick up the kills. But here's the thing. RNG have a window where they know that game talents are on the bottom side of the map because they see that their blue timer has been picked up. And Looper very clearly has vision and he denies and stops their backs. So you have the call where we can either play to the top side of the map knowing that we have a numbers discrepancy, either the mid lane or the top lane or even falling back to the Rift Herald if you don't feel confident enough to... Uh, impact the tower at all or, or bring the tower into a factor but instead rng continuously let's just collapse bottom let's just take the kills it doesn't translate into any sort of objective they don't immediately you know swing bottom or swing mid and take a tower they're just killing people repeatedly they also lost out on gold there too it's just it's so strange like you you very clearly had the advantage to play the top side of the map yeah super odd super odd However, Game Talent's probably still going to be okay with this. Two-item power spike now being hit by Penta Q. Republic, well and truly ahead in the farm. Was up by about 30 CS before Xiaohu shoved out this top wave. That's denied Looper a little bit, and Gimgoon feeling pretty comfortable as far as where he is. That Spirit Visage already there, as well as that Barmy Cinder, allow him, allowing him to control these creep waves a little bit better. Not to mention Ventral Maelstrom already there. Can clear out a creep wave quite nicely, and Wushong. This guy's farming out the jungle as well as he'd like. Looper taking a lot of damage here from Pentacue. Has to respect the Qs. It's a true shot for Flies through as well. Wushong looking for the knockup. Gets it there as Pentacue just launches himself forward. And Savoki hits a binding. And Pentacue may actually die to Beatrice. Nope, not going to this time. Manages to survive the bird. Picks up a pick. But meanwhile... Yeah, Gimgoon actually getting aggressed on towards the top side of the map. However, RNG have found GT here. And Republic gets destroyed. The teleport coming in from Gimgoon. As you can see, Pentacue off to the side. He's very, very low. Wushong has got the aggression. As MLXG's going to get caught, Pentacue uses the E for damage at such low health. Nice spell shield from Uzi. As Marty gets tagged as well. Here comes Talia. Yeah, Weaver's Wall gets him over to the side. As Savoki's the target. Fantastic shove. And Savoki's going to get locked down. Gimgoon grabs the kill in the back line, though, as Pentacue takes down Uzi. Teleport comes in from Looper. And Pentacue. Yeah, Beatrice is going to be your death this time around, but such a messy fight. And in the end, I think it went even. And it's just pocket gold. Again, these fights don't really mean anything in terms of an advantage around, say, the upcoming dragon or a, a tower. Right now, RNG just kind of going back, resetting their map. It will be an Infernal Drake in the next six seconds, so both teams do need to rush to this spot and start setting up their vision. But that was just, that was for funsies. Yeah. But it looked fun. This also means that a ton of key ultimates are also down, coming into a potential 5v5. So we may see a scenario where teams just kind of silently pressure each themselves off of vision, but may wait to pull the trigger. There are a lot of really low cooldown ultimates here as well. Republics is already back off. We do have the Soul Shackles almost there for Zavoki as well. It's pretty much RNG that are being punished. You have uh, Onslaught of Shadows down. Talia ult down and Mata's ult down. So game talents, if they want to pull the trigger, now is the time. Yeah, well, haven't really counted that one out just yet. Is Gimgoon going to shove up this mid wave? See who answers that. Is Wushang looking for Mata or Xiaohu? Mata just walking over. Luka's going to get here as well. So everyone grouped up on the side of RNG. The on the hunt is now ready as Xiaohu works some more ground. Yeah, RNG just doing a great job, not over committing to this, still waiting for their cooldowns, which they now have back up on Hecarim, but uh, keeping game talents at an arm's length and now picking up this dragon. Yeah, this dragon. Wushong is going to close the distance, but MLXG locks down the dragon. Nice black shield there under Wushong, but now not going to have it for the carries. GT now looking to disengage. They've lost the trade. No need to lose any more as Gimgoon. Nice arcane smash as Wushong taking some damage here from the flanking Xiaohu launches the tanks back into the team as Gimgoon 
has the black shield. True Shot Barrage flies through. You can see Weaver's Wall now going to stop any engagement, but Xiaohu in an awkward position. Poke damage still flying through. RNG getting the better end of that stick as Wushang always finds himself in these odd spots. Looper launching his way back around. Nice spell shield once again from Uzi as he backs away. Game Talents might find themselves a bit of control here in the mid lane. I... Uh Xiaohu is very low health, low mana, so it's pretty much entirely up to Uzi to stave them off this tower. Yeah, Black Shield lands on Amata, and Xiaohu has to move out of the way as in goes MLXG. He's looking for Pentaq. Empress Divide comes down. Pentaq still alive from the Black Shield, but Uzi's going to lock him down, and Looper in the back line. Republic's dead. Kim Goon going to follow there as well as Uzi's kiting him around. Savoki going to be the next option. Looper waiting for some cooldowns, not going to have it. And now it's RNG's turn to push down this wave, and MLXG with that engage. That was stunning. And RNG finally get a team fight and a necessary spot that actually translates and means something for map control. Yes, it was a great setup from MLXG, but I need to see more of this from RNG. I need to see meaningful 5v5s. Yeah. Well, Looper now going to be able to clear out this massive wave towards the top side of the map. He'll be very happy to do so here as well as Rod of Ages ticking up. Going for the Zonyas as his next item. Not respecting the multiple sources of magic damage. Wanting to make sure that he can stave off Wushong and Pentaq. And also have that stasis, which is probably the most important part. The armor not necessarily a thing that you really worry about too much for a Zonyas. Should be noted in terms of itemization that uh, Uzi is one step closer to his magical infinity edge, so looking for about 1,500 gold, possibly a little bit less, depending on how much he's got in his back pocket. It's about 1,415, I think. It's 1,425. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you're the Eddie Carry player. <laughs> if I play Eddie Carry, I play Mordekaiser. I just round it up for... Mm hmm I like it. Uh, Wushong getting himself out of here. Oh, segues into a pink ward very nicely. So the binding is going to get him out. But RNG... Now with about a 1,300 gold lead. They do almost have the Trinity Force on MLXG, who did take a bit of a detour, grabbed himself the Spectre's Cow, and I respect that a lot. And Looper now has the Zonyas here as well. So scary stuff. Big spikes for RNG. Yep, which is why they're so confidently moving into the top side of the map and placing their Baron Vision. Uh, so in the previous series, they were maybe a bit over-eager, a little overzealous. Mm -hmm. on uh, taking this objective, but definitely in the driver's seat right Understatement now. Understatement of the series, I think, Frostgren. It's okay. <laughs> We're climbing back. <laughs> I kind of feel there. there just has to be, you know, Demacia Cup happen. They're just like, let's just style on people. Because mm -hmm. I feel like there's there's glimpses of the, the elite RNG, and then it just kind of turns into this, let's just kill them. Yep. Like, meaningful fights versus, like, stylish ones. Like, yeah, we could. But now nah, let's just go. Let's have some fun. Guys are playing Talia. Mm hmm. Well, Xiaohu is actually playing fantastically well in this Talia yeah. at the same time. He's had some pretty cool ultimates um, and definitely understands this champion mechanically very well. So, first time playing it in the LPL, but has definitely been grinding this one in the solo queue. Yeah, and also RNG must be scrimming with it as well because the team knows how to work with that Weaver's Wall at the same time. Understands where Xiaohu is going to be placing it. Mata, of course, able to direct him as he probably would. There's another one. Xiaohu going to block off Pentaq, does have, of course, the E in order to get himself forward. Actually going for the 1v1 as the exhaust goes down, Mata to save the day, but Xiaohu's still going to fall. The Mystic Shot picks him up, and now GT are here. They get the wall in as well, Uzi has to flash over, but in goes Gimgoon and picks up the AD carry. Swain takes down the mid laner, so now it's just tanks, supports, and junglers going at each other. As loop is the only real source of damage. MLXG, I guess, is here with his almost Trinity Force, but RNG theoretically win the fight. Caster Curse strikes again. Last series, we're talking up game talents, how they can feasibly 2 0 RNG. They just get smashed in a last team fight. We're talking up Xiao, who's really good pressing his buttons. Speaking of pressing buttons. Yep, we've got a lot of them being pressed here. Savoki's going to make his way through as well. You can see Swain still on the top side. It looks like GT with a numbers advantage. Want to take this one down. Teleport's going to come in. They're not going to be able to kill the turret in time, as now RNG looking for the re engage. This is the little team fight that could here with all of these high damage champions missing, but Xiaohu's going to make his way around. Will he be able to land the bolts onto Savoki? No, he's not. The Twisted Advance gets in. No seismic shove. Never move comes down. McGimmon says, I never wanted to anyway. And everyone just backs away. We're fine. Just it's fine. Out. Dragon comes up in a minute. <laughs> they can't turn on Baron because we've staggered our backs appropriately. Okay. Pentacue. 
styled on Xiao Hu. Mm -hmm. uh, Xiao Hu pretty much missed all of his damaging abilities, and Pentacue with a massive outplay. Had to give him props. I know it happened like 20 minutes ago because we've been fighting every <laughs> single opportunity. Yes. Good job, Pentacue. Republic and Pentacue really stepping up this series. Well, they certainly are. Republic, unfortunately, got relatively deleted in that last fight, but it's difficult. It's fine. He had a Vladimir game. Yeah, he did. And he looked good in that one. Did well on the victor. He certainly did. That is his champion, of course. The old victor. But now Pentacue back up there again saying, Xiao, come do it again. I know you've got the ult. Bring it. Does have more of Malmodius now built up as well. As well as the execution is calling to stop Looper from regening too much of his health bar. MLXG as well. A little bit. That W. Now Gimgoon. Stepping his way forward. He doesn't have a lot of fear right now with his two items built up. It's because they see Talia uh, bottom. You immediately see the pings out from Game Talents, and yes, her ultimate can get her quite a distance on the map, but it is not global. It's about the range of a Lux Holt. Doesn't have his TP. Items. Well, Pentacue. There, uh, Imlex, she's actually just making a really big wrap around. He wants to engage. GT grouped as five. Will be a five versus five as Uzi does use the spell shield. See where the game talents look at this as a means to go in. As there's the never move. Gimgoon might be the engaged target, Here but he's probably the not the one they're looking for. As that dark binding was god tier. As MLSG is going to be locked down. Another knock up comes in as they want to get the horse out of there, but Pentacue's going to get turned on. Uzi picks it up. Weaver's Wall locks down any sort of peel from GT. They lose their AD carry and RNG survive. MLXG will go back. He'll just canter his way back towards that Baron Pit. Republic does at least manage to clear out his minion wave. But I'm not sure whether they're going to be able to deny RNG any control of this area. And it looks so good for game talents. Like you said, Savoki hitting a game-changing binding right there yeah. by stopping the horse from getting into that back line. Uh, but unfortunately, Uzi so confident, stepping forward, laying down that damage. And then a really nice Weaver's Wall to make sure that it's an isolated 2v4. And there's zero response from game talents. Yeah, Pentacue just couldn't quite get out of there. On the hunt, just a little bit too powerful. And Uzi, he's got three items. He basically two shots in Ezreal right now. And Xiaohu going to get hit by that Dark Binding. Savoki's got his eye and nice black shield, but he's going to fall extraordinarily low. Q, not quite enough range. Savoki has to go back to base. Gimgoon gets back here. Not sure how Savoki survived, but he pressed his buttons pretty good in order to do so. Still even had the uh, Lock of the Iron Slurry. Definitely not where he wants to be, though, limping away with 10% HP. Uh, the Cloud Drake will be the one to fall, but more importantly, it means that the Elder Drake yeah. is now on the timer for the map. And that, that is also augmenting Mountain, Infernal, and Cloud now for RNG. So Just a, giving them a bunch more stats. A smattering. Yeah. A tasting, if you will. It is. Not exactly a smorgasbord. But a potpourri. Potpourri. I don't know whether it's an arrangement of dried flowers. Not Sorry. that I know intimately what potpourri is or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've smelled your desk. Damn it. Never mind. My grandma used to make potpourri, by the way. And we're done. Yep, okay. <laughs> Shahu, looking to clear out this top No, wave. he's looking to kill Pentacue. He doesn't care about the creep wave. <laughs> who kills who in that matchup? I'm pretty sure Pentacue does pretty well. And I'm pretty sure Shahu doesn't care. <laughs> Needs to prove himself. Wuxiang takes a lot of damage from Uzi, but he's pretty tanky right now. At least has the Warden's Mail now built up. Guardian Angel almost there for Gimgoon. Look at them hunt him! Yeah, they want to kill this Ezreal real bad. Oh. Now moving back to this creep wave. Goodness me, Pentacue, you are playing with fire. Technically ice. Okay, good point. MLXG, though, has gone back to farming his jungle, so moment of respite. Yeah, most definitely. And Wuxiang now able to clear out some vision. Xiaohu sort of off him no man's land here in the river. There's GT looking to set up. And what are their options? They're down by 2,000 gold. GT haven't won a fight in the last little while. True Shop Barrage going to scan things out. They need to get them into a choke point. So they need to survive the initial engagement as Republic and Looper walk into each other. We're fine. We're cool. They need to survive the initial engagement of uh, Hecarim and then just funnel people into a choke point and stall out long enough for Azir to do Azir things. Well, the Azir had half health here as well as when I last checked. Has both of his summoner spells. We've got a couple of heals here for GT. Is MLXG over to the side. Pentacue. 
Snags him with the Mystic Shot, but at the moment it's like both teams are testing the waters. It's just, it's so concerning because the longer a team fight goes on... Uh, Weaver's Wall. Savoki gonna get shoved back in. That pickoff was fantastic. Now has to use the locket as Pentacu finds his way over. Nice heal to try and save his support, but he doesn't get it. Xiaohu in trouble as Pentacu launches his way over. Is able to pick up the kill, but is it enough as Uzi's in exactly the right position here towards the back of the fight. Boomerang flies through, Gimgoon tanking as best he can, but Onslaught of Shadows locks down the tree. Does, of course, have the Guardian Angel, but he's going to die. Pentaq survives. However, that is three dead, and RNG knocking on the base of GT. And the big thing is the fact that Azir is dead. Not only because, again, Azir is going to be the big responsible party for outputting damage late game, uh, but it eliminates a ton of their wave clear and their ability to contest and to poke off of this Baron. Not to mention disengage potential as well as RNG. See that Scrying Orb? They are going to go in. They have a couple more orbs available. As you can see, Preyseeker flies through. This Baron taking a lot of damage. His Marta is so low. On the Hunt's being popped, Pentacue's going to die. Uzi crits his face off. As now Wuxiang wants to try and get this Desperation Steal. The Teleport coming in as Wuxiang now just wants to get away. Needs to try and save his own life. The Baron's doing a bunch of work to multiple players on RNG as Savoki makes his way over the top. Dark Binding lands onto Xiaohu, but he's not in range of the Baron, which is a thank goodness situation here for RNG, and they don't get the Baron. And it's because of a greedy play from Looper, in all honesty. Uh, Looper flashing over the wall and chasing, as opposed to staying on the Baron and tanking it up. So RNG were trying to do their best to juggle the aggro while yeah. chasing down Wusheng, as opposed to just sticking to the Baron. So game talents, they weather the storm. Now looking at a shot of this Elder Drake in the next two minutes. Yeah, and we do have Jahu picking up his blue buff. We've got almost six items here for Uzi, who almost has more of Malmordius as the final one. That is model reminder completed. This guy is huge. The Siva is online and ready to boomerang people's faces off. Let's see whether Uzi can get him to sell himself into the right position like he did in the last fight in order to do so. MLXG has his GA. Gimgoon looking to try and stop Looper, who looks relatively unstoppable. He's got the Spirit Visage, more than happy, just wants to get the Void Star. So he's doing notable damage to these GT members. Teleport now coming in, RNG committing to the Baron one more time. And it's because they see Gamegoon on the bottom side of the map trying to match up across Looper. There's no reason he should be there. It's not like he's stopping a wave. This is now a 4v5. Yeah, without the big tank there as well as the wall flies through. They've caught out the jungler as Wuxiang in trouble. Xiaohu picks up the kill. The first pick of the fight is already there as MLXG taking a lot of damage. Has the Onslaught of Shadows. And GT have to back away. Gimgoon finally gets in here, but it's still a 4v5. We're going to call that a more questionable Talia wall. It did manage to pick off one, but it also saved a big portion of game talents. Gimgoon now back in position. They could look to try to stop this. We'll, we'll see whether they can do so as RNG starting off this Baron one more time. It's gone down extraordinarily low. There's the slow field as GT get in there. Republic's able to take down Mata. As you can see, the Baron falls in favor of MLXG and launches himself in. Pentacue immediately taken out of the fight as Gimgoon on top of Xiaohu. He will manage to pick up that kill, but Uzi... Republic's doing work. He cannot be tanked. Yeah, Republic able to do something as MLXG's going to fall to his GA. But that's not enough and Uzi just shoots him in the face. There's the Spell Shield for the Dark Binding, and he grabs a whole bunch of lifesteal and heads back towards Savoki, who's like, well, I'm out of here. If I'm going to die, I'm going to do it on my own terms. Republic tried so hard that team fight and almost made it count, but unfortunately, Maokai went one way, Morgana went the other way, and Azir was left with Uzi just running at his face after the Emperor's Divide had been set up. Yeah, Uzi once again doing a whole bunch of work. Yeah, you can see exactly right. Over 8k damage there for Republic, who almost saved it, like you said. However, it's not enough. Wuxiang's going to fall down here in the jungle as well as MLXG picks that one up. And Gimgoon now trying to get some work done. Uzi just kiting him around. That Warlord's Bloodlust doing a whole bunch of work, as well as that Phantom Dancer helping out. And Uzi, when he gets to this late game stage, he just knows that he can't be bested in mechanical outplay. And people don't typically think of Uzi as a silver player, but in 2015 when he was playing for OMG, uh, he was almost exclusively a silver yeah. player, and that's when Uzi really matured and branched out from just being the superstar, selfish AD carry to being a team-oriented, uh, legendary god. Yeah.
And he's demonstrating that right here. Mora Malmordius now completed here on Uzi. He's got six items, 9, 2, and 13. ADCS in the lead. What more could you want out of your AD carries? RNG able to move over to a potential Elder Drake. Or just use this Baron buff to push down and break down these turrets. As, as well coming in one more time as Republic caught out of position completely. That's just a party. Yeah. And uh, he is definitely crying. He's definitely invited, though. Which is good news. As Savoki has his Dark Binding dodged in an awkward way there by Looper. And RNG now pushing down this turret. The mid lane is going to be the focus. And RNG will not be stopped. Look at the damage out of Uzi. This is going to be a similar fate for the inhibitor. Do they want to actually win the game? It's only Republic dead. But GT are missing so much of their AoE damage. The They're Nexus missing. turrets are the focus. Savoki now in trouble as well. As Uzi really wants this kill. Fantastic spell shield comes in. He gets knocked up by Wushong. But that's like four crits. And the Rek'Sai is going to die. Gimgoon getting caught out by the rest of RNG. And he's going to be Pentaq falling. RNG just steamroll over GT in the last couple of fights. And this is the team we were expecting to show up. It took them a while to get there. But they got there in the end, and that's what counts. We had a bit of a victory lap in game two. You know, we had to stretch. Yep. But we got there. We came online. That is the 5v5 that we expect from a team of RNG's caliber. They set up their fights around the Baron pit really well, executed on it well. And big shout-outs to Xiaohu on that Talia, making oh, yeah. great picks with the Weaver's Wall. And that pick at the end of the game there on the Republic, was, that sealed the fate of the game. Uh, it was really beautiful to see. The man was hitting a whole bunch of his abilities. Some of his seismic shoves, the directions that he chose there as well, were actually beautiful to see. And we are seeing the versatility of this champion as well coming out of the mid lane. Rookie did demonstrate a whole lot of it. The man is ridiculous on basically any champion he picks up. But very impressive out of Jahu for that one. See, players are going to shake hands and hats off to Game Talents in that series because they were contenders. Uh, I mean, game two, where they could have walked away with the series, effectively came down to a 50-50 yeah. uh, team fight, because it came down to a single team fight that ended the game. So definitely, Game Talents did very well for the series. They should walk away with this one for their heads held high. Um, but props to RNG, you know, finally deciding to show up at the very end of that series. Looked really good in a couple of those team fights. And again, a uh, huge applause for Xiaohu on the Talia. Yeah, and I mean, I have to say that Uzi also played phenomenally well on the Siva. Got himself towards that late game stage, was always in, that, in those side lanes picking up all the farm. It's how he likes to play his Sivir out, understands that, you know, mid game, early game damage, not necessarily something you're relying on, does take opportunistic kills like that. But in the late game, this guy was moving forward, fighting tanks 1v1, happy to do so because he just knows what he's capable of at that stage of the game. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not too big of a fan right now of MLXG's Hecarim. I think it needs no. a little bit of work, but that's something that we kind of expect from MLXG. You know, a lot of people are really respect and fear his Nidalee right now, but in the very beginning of MLXG trying to pick up that champion, it was actually just kind of a train wreck. <laughs> just like a disaster of, you know, spears flying everywhere, nothing's connecting, but obviously having the uh, perseverance to continue to grind on that champion to turn it into a threat for so I have no doubt that a champion like Hecarim, MLXG will get to master, uh, just not this series. Yeah, certainly not. But we are going to have a look at what happened today as, of course, WE were able to take down Saint. 2-0 victory. Of course, we made it to that 35-minute mark, and they were able to take that one down. Saint still looking for that win. As you can see, Game Talents taking game number one in the next series against RNG, the one that we just saw concluded. And RNG were able to follow up with two victories, but not as solid as we were expecting out of the top team in Group B. Yeah, uh, that said, big shout out to Game Talents. They definitely put up quite a fight, so it wasn't like RNG were just facing pushovers and failed to execute. That's exactly right, and Game Talents, because we're in the cross-conference, not going to fall below Snake too far just yet. See how Snake go in their next couple of matches, see whether they can pull out in front, because this would have been a huge deal for Game Talents if they had have won this series, just because that would have been that one extra win Solid, solidified themselves in that second spot right underneath EDG. So we have a look at Group B now. Royal never give up. Eight and one. So, of course, still not even with EDG, but even on victories at least, still holding that top spot. Oh, uh, yeah, and it's just now a very close race between that middle of the pack. Again, the coveted spot is fourth place that you want to make sure that you can walk into the LPL playoffs and have a shot at that title. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you, uh, you did just see the fact that WE now actually ahead of IMA as well. So closing out that particular tie is IG versus IMA is going to be our first matchup tomorrow, followed by OMG versus Newbie. 
And of course, that is going to be happening same time, same place, just in 24 hours. Right here. <laughs> That's exactly right. Now, just what, what, what are we doing? Uh, we're going to talk about now OMG versus Newbie okay. and IMA. Because, again, we've got a lot of B teams showing up tomorrow and kind of middle of the pack teams. So we talked about how the middle of the pack for B is just super stacked, very yeah. tight race, whereas the bottom teams of Group A are definitely underperforming. This is people like Newbie, like Invictus Gaming, like Saint. Saint looked better today, so we're going to see if Newbie can kind of ride their uh, their current upswing and continue to perform and turn back into that you know, old Chowgu roster that we expect from them. Yeah, and it's actually really interesting looking at tomorrow's matchups as well. IG versus IMA, if we had looked at it at the beginning of the season, we would have thought IG looking favored. But at the moment, as far as all of the teams playing tomorrow, IMA looking like the strongest. Uh, very clear-cut win conditions, and I think that's the big difference. Yes, uh, Invictus Gaming have clear-cut win conditions in Rookie. Yep. But uh, I may just have more options there as we take a look at the MVP of last series, and it's going to be Uzi. Big surprise. Yeah, back to back MVPs for the Silver player and Ezreal player. I actually kind of disagree, though. I feel like Xiaohu on the Talia was a bit more clutch in terms of uh, game changing plays, although Uzi was just a workhorse in that back line. Damn right he was. And I have a feeling that if Xiaohu was able to take down Penic with that wall, he would have got the MVP, but unfortunately, <laughs> because he to. didn't get the outplay, they're like, take it away. Yep. He doesn't get the MVP. Give it to the massive damage out of the Siva. It was always able to kite around that Maokai. It just seemed like the game lasted too long, did too much damage, and damn right did he do damage. I mean, what, 36% of the team's damage is pretty good when you come online so late in the game, and he was spending so much time you're just killing creeps. And again, it's this idea that uh, Uzi has definitely transitioned into being able to take a champion like Sivir and carry for it. Again, uh, he had this reputation of only being able to play hyper carries and being very self-absorbed and having all of the resources, you think back to Starhorn Royal Club Uzi days, given yeah. to him. Uh, when he got on a team like OMG in 2015, when they still had the likes of Go Going, Cool, and Loveling, you know, this all-star, superstar Chinese team, uh, he changed up his play style. He became more of a role player, uh, matured a lot in terms of how he's working with his team. And I think that very clearly shows, and his recent... Uh, moving over into the likes of newbie into the likes of rng because he's even temperament he doesn't demand that many resources he sit back he does his job he's super consistent and you know that you can always count on uzi late game without you know sacrificing everything to the uzi go uzi god yeah and this is the weird thing as well because we're not used to talking about uzi as being that stable member of the team but rng honestly looked all over the shop in everywhere other than uzi it was Mata doing crazy things, launching himself around the map in game number one, which honestly led them to starting too many fights they couldn't actually win I against think GT. In all honesty, it was kind of Mata and MLXG just being a little bit over-eager. Hot-headed, I'd say, yeah. That's uh, probably a pretty good word. Uh, and those are typically like the, that's the leading members for RNG. You know, they isolate matchups for MLXG to find yeah. advantages and then how he snowballs lanes ahead. And so with, uh, you know, Mata being a bit over-eager with MLXG, uh, you know, flying in on the Hecarim everywhere, which is a bit scattered, but they got it together in the end. Yeah, they most certainly did. But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to bring us to the end of day number one. Of course, three more days of LPL action for week six coming up. On behalf of myself, Roscoe, and our whole production team, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.